Good morning for me. Hello. I'm in Istanbul having a little ramble with you guys and raining. What? Oh, did I bring the Irish weather with me? So nice to see rain. Oh, it's warm rain. Oh, it's heavy rain. Ah, yes. <laughs> nice, lovely rain. Little Istanbul solo uh, ramble vlog. I'm actually heading down. The reason why I'm in Istanbul is because the fam, my niece and nephew, are on their very first holiday and they're going down to southern Turkey. So I fly into Izmir on Thursday. So they fly out Tuesday, tomorrow. And I decided to spend a couple of days by myself in Istanbul because I've always wanted to come here. And while I could plan a kind of trip around it, I was like, excellent. So I'm gonna vlog the next couple of days in Istanbul, loads to see. Gonna hit up the bazaar first. So I got in last night. First thing I did was, okay, first of all, the reason why I didn't start my vlog last night was because I flew Turkish Airlines and as someone who was a Ryanair flyer, <laughs> was not used to getting the free meal on the plane. What? I was like, abundance. And the free drink. It was only a four and a half hour flight and I felt like I was on an Emirates flight. I felt like when I was going to Dubai, they gave me the food and they gave me the drink. So your girl had too many wines. I also made another pal in Dublin airport. If you ever fly out of uh, gate number 301 to 307, it's this secret little nook and there's a little bar there. And any time, my past two flights out of Dublin have been out of there and I've made pals and I've ended up having points and I've gotten onto the plane tipsy. So a lot of socialising with strangers was had yesterday. As soon as I got here, it was dark. Two, we're two hours ahead of home, but it got dark about half eight, so a little bit earlier than back home in Ireland. Went and I got a kebab, proper kebab, proper took it. I, I am here for the food and the cats because cats are worshipped here, the kebabs. I'm here for all of the savoury food. Did you hear that rain? Got a proper Turkish kebab, got my first baklava. I hope I'm saying that right, but I don't want to say it wrong. So I got a Turkish baklava. Also tested out a shisha, but then I realised that, I didn't realise they had tobacco in them. Yeah, and I got a fruity flavour. I was like, oh, apple, it's just blown smoke. No, there's a lot of tobacco in them. So yeah, I had a shisha when in Turkey and haven't went to bed early, I'll give you a little whip around the room. This is very budget, so if you are perfect for solo, perfect for a couple. There is, I did see a young couple next door. Now the child was probably like five or six, like didn't need a buggy. So maybe an older child, but I don't think it would be too kid friendly. There's like world's tiniest lift. And it's, um, how would you say? It's in quite a, not a residential area. The location is amazing but it's budget AF, budget AF, but it's clean, I feel safe, the staff are friendly, and I'm going down for breakfast now, but I'll give you a whip around. Let me turn the light on, is that, is that making it a bit better? I think because it's raining outside, so it's actually quite big. I have this massive bed, I think it's like a king size, um, drawers and stuff have like a wardrobe over here hello also check out my check out my rose the turkish men are very charming i got this last night i was like why thank you <laughs> very charming uh safe fridge wardrobe living out of a suitcase couch and the bathroom is nice and big let me find the thing um lovely big bathtub like this is floor space, very big. Windows, usual, nothing fancy like. And I mean, it's clean, but like little things, like an L vinegar and water spray with a rag, would have done that, Do you know, nail polish, but we cannot be fussy because your girl only paid like 200 odd euro. So because everything is in walking distance, I'm gonna throw on my backpack. I have to go get some cash, I think, for the bazaar. Um, I'm not, I don't have space in my case. Um, so yeah, I can walk to everything. Everything is like 10 minutes kind of walk around me. Location is amazing. So yeah, I'm just gonna pack up my backpack, put my runners on and go downstairs and get breakfast. So as you can see, we have a dirty big thunder cloud and I need to get to 
the Grand Bazaar. It is a 15 minute walk according to Google. <laughs> so I need to get there before this thunder erupts. Well, have I got a story for you. It absolutely started bucketing down and it got so bad I had to hide in a knicker shop but I have to say the owner of the knicker shop was so lovely I was probably there for half an hour and um, his name was Saeed he was originally from Syria and he gave me some Turkish tea before I was on my way to the Grand Bazaar because it was raining the bazaar was full of people. It was full to the brim. You could kind of get lost here and it's a tiny bit overwhelming, but fun. I felt safe, it was fun. I bought some tea, ate some treats. I also had to buy a new pair of runners because the ones I had got absolutely destroyed. But this is fun to see. You can literally buy anything down here rugs, lamps, spices, tea, food, and always haggle never settle on the first price and just have fun and what I will say is it did get a tiny bit overwhelming because it got really busy with people but again felt safe and it was good fun So I have lived a lot of life since I've last spoken to you. I got trapped in a knicker, well I won't say trapped, but I couldn't leave without getting drenched in a knicker shop. And that was for a good hour. Thankfully, the chap, Saeed, was so nice and made me my first ever Turkish tea. And I just went to this cafe called Nova because I saw that they had a lovely roof terrace, but obviously with it being rain and a lot of stuff was closed. But I did get a little picture of the top. And there is a mosque nearby that's supposed to have lovely gardens. So I'm gonna to walk to that. I had to get a new pair of runners down the bazaar, had to haggle. I think they're all knock off Nike Air Forces, but my feet were soaked and the sole was falling off my shoe. So, had to get a pair of runners. So I'm gonna walk up to the mosque, but I need to get myself a scarf. Now, Saeed did say that you can get them like inside, but I don't wanna risk it in case I can't. So I'm gonna get a scarf and we're gonna to go to the mosque. It's also starting to brighten up as well. The rain has kind of stopped, so that's good. Of all the kind of landmarks and mosques that I did visit, I actually found this one to be the most calm, the most relaxed, and it didn't have as many people as the other ones. And this is my personal favorite. And I had some lunch in the restaurant nearby called Nova, it has a lovely view of the place, and it's much calmer than the other kind of touristy areas. Well, hello. I've come back just to put some charge on my phone. My backpack. So, when I went down to the stalls, you know I didn't come out empty handed. I got some tea to bring home. Now, he put the names on them. It's this love tea. Your girl got some love tea. Apparently, when I make this, if I give it to a fella, he's in love. I don't know if it works. I don't really. What do I do? Just like, here, drink that tea. Magic. Um, I got apple tea because they gave it to me as a tester in the shop and it was lovely. I got, love that it's like vacuum packed to make it easier for me to bring home. Oh, actually, this is baklava and he gave me some to take back because I'm currently wearing clear braces and I couldn't eat it in the shop. So, and then I got relaxed tea. So he said, sleepy tea drink this before bed 
so I got some of this to bring home. This one isn't back in packed, but there's more dry stuff in it. So I got three blends of tea and some, did I call that baklava? Uh, Turkish delight is what I meant to say. Turkish delight. Yeah, so he gave me a bit of that to try. So, quick travel tip, just because I posted a picture on Instagram and someone had just said to do like, if I could do like an updated travel video with recommendations. So I'm only kind of back rambling a little bit since, you know, obviously the pandemic and stuff. And I don't feel like an expert, but I can give you a little travel tip and that is I always get a SIM card and this time I got an eSIM so I didn't even have to get the SIM card in the airport. I had downloaded a SIM. So the way it works is, if I'll leave a link to the place where I got my eSIM and it was $18 for 20 gigs of data and one month you can get less if you just want to use it for maps because the one thing I use always when I travel is Google Maps and regardless of where I go I will get a foreign SIM card my phone is unblocked and but this time it was great because I can text on my own number but I'm on a Turkish SIM card and apparently it depends on the type of phone you have if it's a really old model and my phone's a couple of years old I think it's like iPhone 10 or something I don't know and those ones can have so you go into cellular I just almost showed my phone number but you have primary oh turn it on and then you have like turkey sim you can't see that so turkey sim and you just make sure on your primary that you don't have uh, data roaming on and on turkey sim you don't have cellular switching basically when you order it there's a really good easy how to instruction thing so make sure I'm on yeah turkey thing apparently you can have up to five sim cards on your phone and they're e-sims so they I just followed some magic setting and I had a sim card paid money done so regardless of I never try and rely on wi-fi ever it's great if you can get it but when you're especially solo traveling as well you like I was able to my taxi was taking ages coming out from the airport and you just have that peace of mind that you can go on Google Maps on your phone you can see your live location and you can see where you need to go so it just gives you that extra peace of mind and I swear by it there was sim card shops uh, there was a Vodafone and there was something else as you got into the arrival hall in Istanbul airport so if you want to purchase a sim card I believe they're more expensive in the airport but I think like 20 euro type thing for you know topping up your sim card whatever so um in eSIM and I'll put a link to that in the thing but that's what I swear by and I literally I just go on Google Maps and I've just realized that there's a park right next to me and I'm gonna go walk up to that park for sunset I'm gonna check actually what time is sunset eight o'clock so I'm going to ramble up that direction and get something to eat I might have like an early dinner and then that's what I do. That's how I plan and find stuff. Instagram is fun as well if you for finding like cafes and stuff. If you search the location, um, you can find stuff. But just a word of warning, things obviously do look better on Instagram than real life. So sometimes you can see cute cafes and you're like, oh yeah, that looks lovely because they posted a lovely picture at it. But in real life, it's not Instagram because is Instagram real life? Sometimes it's the highlight. So there is a travel tip, foreign SIM cards, always get them, use them for your maps. I don't bother wasting my time with those dongle Wi-Fi things, I think they're a waste of money. If your phone, get your phone unblocked if you can and use foreign SIM card. This park is perfect spot if you maybe wanted to grab some street food or you're having like a little picnic. It's also a welcome spot of shade in the hot Istanbul August heat. So very relaxing, very chill. You'll find like a lot of local people just sitting and chilling. The flowers are pretty and it's right next to the palace. Now when I went in the evening that you're seeing here, the palace was actually closed. So with the palace being closed, I decided to head on up to Sultanament Square. I'm saying that wrong so there is two really popular mosques either side of each other and like I think one was like a museum now the queues were really big 
to get in it's free to get in as well and don't worry if you like maybe you're wearing a pair of shorts or whatever because you can get I think it's called a hijab um at the entrance so you can just throw it on so that your knees are covered shoulders covered and pop on your scarf if you want to head on inside but just bear in mind that the queues are big I went into the blue mosque I didn't go into the other one just because the queues were quite big and your girl was getting hungry <laughs> so I headed off to get some dinner Good morning, am I backlit? Can you see me? Hang on. No. Yesterday it was torrential rain. Today it's heat wave. <laughs> I'll have yesterday I had soggy feet. Today I'll have sunstroke. No, I won't. We got the cream on. Gonna cover cover my shoulders from the sun. I was having a little Google at things to do and I'm gonna go up to the palace today. So it looks like there's two palaces. There's one the other side of the river. It begins with a D. I won't even try and play this. I'll put it on screen. And then there's top, I call it top cappy. <laughs> there's no easy either. Palace. And that's only a short walk from me. And I was reading reviews because I was like, oh, I can get a 30 minute tram to the other side to go to the other one. And I was reading reviews and they were saying that the other one has like lovely chandeliers. It's known for its like crystal chandeliers. But the one up here, I think, has more history. It's like the Ottoman empire and all this stuff and you know me i love a good palace <laughs> so my plan for you today is go up to the palace because people were saying like you could spend a good two three hours going around it and it's not too far from my hotel so i think i'm going to walk to it ramble the palace it's half 10 in the morning now so i'm hoping the queue isn't bad a lot of the reviews were saying the queues in august chaos in the heat so i'm like oh not good um and then this afternoon, I'm after Googling and figuring out the ferry. So right beside me as well, this location, perfect, 10 out of 10. There's a ferry, and the ferry brings me to Harim, or Haram, Harim, H-A-R-E-M. And it's like a 20 minute over and back ferry. Now I can get off, and it brings me to the Asian side, so we can cross continents today. Let's do that. So I'm thinking palace, lunch, ferry. I also asked the lovely guy downstairs about Turkish bath because I overheard a lady this morning saying she'd like to book a Turkish bath for tomorrow and I was like yes so I was like I'm sorry I just overheard you saying that and um, so he's like yeah I have two places recommendations where you can go and get a hammam because if you watched my Morocco vlog I think I must have had about three hammams in Morocco I just love it they scrub yeah they are it's just Butte. Now I am going to be going down to South South Turkey on Thursday and I could get like a Turkish bath down there but I just thought no Istanbul I wanna I wanna go now obviously I won't be able to vlog too much of the Turkish bath but if you want a little treat that is an option so I think I might do that and then because of all my walking on these days tomorrow can be a little bit of a rest day I can get a hammam. <laughs> anyway enough waffling Let's go to the palace. Also, just before I go, a little travel tip. Um, these are great. They're just like hydration tablets. Obviously, if you have any underlying thingies, medicine things, but they're just like a little supplement and I drop it into water. It's kind of like a Baraka or like a vitamin, but just, I find, I was actually taking these at home in the heat wave because I wasn't used to the heat, like when you're trying to do your normal stuff. So. These are handy, you can get different brands, but literally hydration tablets for when you're doing a lot of walking around or if your tummy is a little bit off from eating different food. So I am having one of them this morning. I have it baking over here. <laughs> so it just turns into like a little, a little drink, strawberry flavor, keep me hydrated. So this is actually the archeological museum that is right next door to the palace 
because I'm having no luck with the palace. The palace was closed. <laughs> so I decided, okay, next best thing, I'll go into the mu museum that's beside it because I do love a good, you know, bit of history, bit of archaeology museum. It's actually quite nice and there is like two buildings, three buildings, and one of them has lovely tiled um, walls and there is like little trinkets and things. So it is nice to see and it's much calmer than the palace so if you do go on a day like me and the palace is closed then this is the next best next best thing to it Oh my god, I'm sweating. So the main part, the main palace was closed today. And I felt terrible because as I was walking up, a chap was like, the palace is closed. But that is actually a known scam I read about. But he was correct, it was. But I went into the archaeological museum. I was touching the back of my dress and it's sweating. So I think... I could come back in the morning. It looked like they had something going on. I did see that on, on Mondays it's closed, but it looked like they had all like guards with guns and there was people coming and going. So maybe they were having like a private event or something. So the main palace that I wanted to go to is closed, but these things happen. It's really warm. So I think I'm gonna go on the ferry to the Asian side and get lunch there because I think that'd be a nice place to cool down. I'll cool down on the ferry, lovely wind in my face and then get some lunch and see what the other side looks like. So here's my tips with the ferry. The machine that was there only took cash and it was maximum 40 lira. I had 50 lira, but again, another kind chap who was working there gave me some change and I was able to get a ticket to go over and back and it was worked out about you're talking one euro fifty there about so really cheap and this is a great alternative than spending loads on a fancy boat trip so I got to Haram which is the other side and at first I was like oh god this is really, really residential and I feel a little bit lost but I found this lovely cafe up the top that is a hidden gem had amazing views I got coffee and a toasty sorry tea and a toasty and there is some steps for you to walk back down to the ferry port the ferry port is wild it's a bus station so don't be overwhelmed when you get there so i'm going up to the spice bazaar the egyptian spice bazaar oh let me get in under the tree very warm today so to kill some time i thought i'd head up to the spice bazaar it's covered as well maybe they'll have some aircon but i think it's a photographer's dream so i'm gonna head up that way Good morning, attempt four, lovely sunshine, hang on. Attempt number two at going to the castle, or the palace. <laughs> Sorry, I just brushed my teeth, I had coffee in my face and I go. And for today is, my lovely receptionist got me a better deal on a hammam. So <clears throat> I wanted to get a massage with my hammam and I left it quite late to book something so he got me like two options and then this morning he was like this one's better value 150 minutes so I have to 
I'm gonna go to the palace, come back, have some lunch, and then go and have an absolute pamper session. And then also, I don't like mentioning the word work when you're supposed to be on holidays, but I checked into Kovac for a few hours for today so it's like a remote working um space because i need a fast upload speed so working in cafes and stuff is grand if you just want to like send emails and stuff but if you need to upload and um, you need the fast wi-fi which is hard to get you kind of have to go to like workplaces or an apple shop and things like that or like domestic wi-fi they might have it but i'm like hey can i use your internet so it was only like i think five euros to check into this place so i'll do that this evening but anyway that's boring talk <laughs> but if anyone needs to do a little bit of work when they're on holidays i highly recommend those options just search for like hot desking places in the location that you're going to be and um, if you do need to do a couple of hours if you are i don't know digital nomad maybe you're working from home but really you've flown off somewhere i don't know okay nice and early hopefully the palace isn't too busy everyone is like having their breakfast around here i got my breakfast early so let's wrap up i also have to pack my bag because tomorrow i've kind of been living out of my suitcase tomorrow i fly to izmir my niece and nephew i got a video of my niece splashing in a pool and um, i said it earlier it's their very first like foreign holiday and i am crashing it so like the fam know I'm coming but my niece and nephew have no idea that I'm coming and I've been dying to tell them and last week when I seen them I was like have fun on your holiday and inside I was like I'm gonna crash your holiday so I'm so excited to see their little faces so I have to pack as well I think that's why I booked myself in for a man because I want to enjoy my last day in Istanbul so in the morning I get a taxi to the airport it's a one hour flight to Izmir and then I think from Izmir down to where they are is about a 30 minute taxi ride now I won't be vlogging when I'm in with them I'm gonna end this vlog this afternoon because I am considering the days with my niece and nephew and fam as actual holiday hence why I'm checking in to do some work in that workspace later so I can kind of laptop off and just have a couple of days in the sun as a holiday so I fly back I think I've got four five days with them five days with the kids now they're on a two-week holiday they're proper holiday but I'm just crashing five days <laughs> and then your girl has to come home <laughs> and because she's self-employed she can't take all these holidays anyway that's the crack let's go so i have just walked in and if you are someone who like me does not like cues in the heat definitely come early i got here at half nine and it was still super busy and a little bit overwhelming but actually now that i've come inside where you insert like your ticket and come in it's much calmer but i can only imagine what this place will be like at like two in the afternoon it is pretty busy
12. Been here for like two, three hours. Look, way more busier and more people coming in. The queue for the tickets, I'd say that's easily about 40 minutes long. Um, I waited about 10 minutes this morning. Oh, and there's more people down there. Another queue just to get in the security check. So there's like a security check as you come in. So the queue for that is huge. So if you are like me, definitely come at 9 a.m. Ah, the lovely view of my air conditioning units. <laughs> there is a pretty um, tree over there with purple flowers on it. Actually, I think I'll move inside so I can see you better. I'm just back to get my stuff for the hammam and I'm going to end my vlog here. I've also been editing this video as I'm going so we're, at a good, we're probably going to be at a good 40 minutes so I hope you first of all got some value and also just to mention travel fatigue is real so you don't have to do um any video i make whether it's you know a diy or whatever you never have to do all of the things i do i am merely just giving you ideas and when i go away like myself where i'm not making a vlog i probably only do half of the things i would do if i know i'm making a travel vlog because i obviously want to put like interesting stuff in a travel vlog and give value so i hope you got some value got some inspiration if you are visiting one thing i will say is you'll probably notice i'm not a big city traveler so like city breaks um i'm more of a kind of naturey person but i have really liked istanbul because there is pockets of nature and i got my cat fix um i let a <laughs> i let a stray cat maul me <laughs> No scratches, no bites, no rabies, hey. Um, on the way back from the palace, she looked like Blondie and I think she was blind as well. And I just gave her some water and she jumped, like she went to walk on me and she hugged me and I was like, can't say no. <laughs> so it's a good job I'm going for a hammam because I'm probably filthy. I washed myself, but a hammam will scrub me before I head down to it. Just some preemptive, is that the word? Answers to some questions, if you might have them. Um, so, solo traveling as a female, is it safe? I felt safe. I am a more seasoned solo traveler, and I've been to many places, um, Morocco, Dubai, America, European places as well, Portugal, Spain, lots of places. And I will leave my travel playlist if you want to check that out. If you're new to my channel, travel vlogs are not, I am not a travel channel, but I do have a playlist because I do like a ramble every now and again. Anyway, you can go and check that out. I felt safe. Um, if you, if it's your very first time to go on a solo trip, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed. And I would recommend dressing conservatively um, and what I mean by that is it's commonplace to kind of cover your knees and your shoulders and your chest. My shoulders were out pretty much the whole time because trying to fix me out farmer's tan. But nobody bad an eyelid to me, to be totally fair. And when you're walking around and rambling around, nobody takes any notice of you. So yeah, any time I feel a bit, I'm like, girl, just get over yourself. Obviously, usual safe practices apply. Highly recommend doing a SIM card, sharing your location. Checking in with your mates daily and also social media and um, not posting your live location. So when you do see me posting on Instagram, it's generally a couple of hours or even the next day um, from when I've actually been there. So, and that goes for anybody on social media, whether you have a following or not, because you never know who is, you know, checking locations and things like that. So yeah, just common sense, but no, felt safe. Everyone was lovely, women, men, everywhere so far really lovely in terms of money i found it quite cheap even though i'm in a kind of touristy kind of area um so like down in those rooftop instagram cafes you're talking sometimes the price of home like i got a mojito and it was like 10 euro and i was like that's really expensive <laughs> for here like and then i got a point from the little shop down there the little just a cute little restaurant thing and it was uh, two euro fifty or something. 
so yeah the touristy areas like everywhere are going to be that bit more expensive but overall no i found it really cheap i honest to god i'm here three days aside from my um massage that i'm gonna get i think i've spent about 200 euro because like i have my breakfast in the hotel and then lunch and dinner i buy a lot of water and apparently you can i googled it you can drink the tap water but people don't so i was just gone with what the locals were doing because i don't want to get the shits i don't think you get the shits anyway but i just got the bottled water which and i didn't see many water fountains but well, i seen some but i didn't see people filling up do you know what i mean so you can risk it for a biscuit. I think that's all the questions I have. You can pop them in the comments. Now I will when this video goes up. Will I be home? But I might not be able to answer questions as quickly as I would normally do. Because I am going to take a couple of breaks. Days off. Mental break. Cannot wait. Hope you enjoyed me ramble. I need to decide where I'm going to next. Actually I'm going on a pilgrimage next. That'll be in September. Anyway enough waffling. Cheeky thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.